Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printer here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make a very simple blog that has some full text search functionality built into it. So I'm not going to focus too much on the blog part. I'm instead going to focus on how to make the blog posts searchable. So this is a continuation of my last video on Flask Woosh Alchemy. So if you haven't seen that video, watch that one first. I have a link to it in the description below. So to get started, uh, first, I have to set everything up with my data model. So I have nothing here. Um, and I have a database set up, but I have no tables. So the first thing I'll need to do is import SQL Alchemy. So from Flask import, whoops, from Flask SQL Alchemy, import SQL Alchemy. And I can't spell right now, so SQL Alchemy, there we go. And then I'll set the configuration values for SQL Alchemy. So app config, and then I have the SQL Alchemy database URI, and I have that over here. So let me just copy and paste it. And then I also have the configuration to track changes. By default, it's enabled, but I'll just uh, add it explicitly here. I think in future versions of Flask, it won't be enabled by default. So I'll just enable it here. So SQL Alchemy track modifications. This is basically so Woosh Alchemy can work. And while I'm at it, I might as well do the configuration for Woosh. So uh, Woosh base. And I'll just put it in a folder called Woosh. I'm not too concerned about it. So here I'll import Flask Woosh Alchemy as WA. And now I'll instantiate the database object. And finally, I'll create a class representing the one table that I want. So all I want are blog posts. I'm not going to do uh, authors or tags or anything like that. Just posts, just to keep it simple. So I'll call this posts. Inherits DB model. And for the whoosh alchemy part, I'll need a searchable. So I'll leave this blank for now, but I'll fill this in in a moment. Uh, I'll have a primary key column. So this is the primary key. And then I'll have two additional columns, one to hold a title. So I'll make this a string, no more than 100 characters. And I also have a content column, which is going, going to be the text of the blog post. And I'll make that a string as well. but. In practice, you'd probably make it Unicode or a text type just so it can hold more characters. But a string is fine in this case because I won't actually write any long blog posts. So the searchable columns will be title and content. And then finally, what I'll do is I'll create the index for Woosh. So Woosh index, I'll have to pass in the app and then the class that I want to index. So that's pretty much it for my data model. Pretty simple stuff. And if you've seen my other videos, then it should be uh, fairly simple for you. So what I'll do now is I'll actually create the table in the database. So I'll import everything from my blog.py file. And I'll run db create all. And now I should have the table in my database. Okay, so here I see the post table was created and there's nothing in it, of course. And also here, I have this whoosh folder that was created. So now that I have the data model, model let me show you what I have ready already. I have an add page and I have an index page. So if I go to the app, and first I need to actually start the server. So Python blog, if I go to the app, I see I have this generic blog page. It's based off a of bootstrap template. And I also have an ad page. And I don't think I've actually added the ad page yet. So how about I do that now? So I just have one route here. I'll add the second route slash ad. And I'll call this ad. And I want to return the ad.html file. So I'll save that. And now I should be able to see it. And I just have this generic form to uh, create blog posts. So now that I have those two things, and I'll just show you the code quickly. Um, basically, 
this ad page has a form with a title and a content and a button. And the index has blog posts along with a form to search. And that search form is going to be the one we're going to use for the full text search. So over here on the right hand side. So I guess the first functionality that I can add is the ability to add posts. So I have this add form and let me make sure everything is okay in the form. So right now the form doesn't have an action or a method, so I'll give it to it. I'll set the method to post and I'll set the action to be uh, add. So the add route is going to be for both get requests and post requests. If they run a get request on add, then it shows the form. If it's a post request then it actually posts the form data, to the server, the server will then add that into the database. So actions add, and then the name is title, and the name title for the title one and the content for the content one. So pretty simple. So I'll add an if statement here, and I'll need to import the request object. So if request method is post, I want to do something here. And if not, then it's going to return the uh, add template. So the first thing I need to do is create a post. So I'll just uh, instantiate a post using the post class that I created. And the title is going to be from the form. So request form title. And then the content will be similar. Uh, Request.form content. And then I'll add this to the database. So db session add post, and then I'll commit it, it's db session dot commit. And then once I'm done, I'll redirect them to the index. So I'll need to import a couple more things. I need redirect and I need URL for. So once I'm done with the database commit, I'll redirect them to the index so they can eventually see the post that they added. So server should restart it. I'll go to the app page and I'll write a test post. So Python post here is, here is a post about Python. It doesn't include any other topic. So I'll submit it. And it looks like it tried to, uh, do something that wasn't a post. So let's see what's going on here. looks like it tried to do, um, a get request. So I need to specify that this can actually take in both get requests and post requests. So I'll edit this and add get and post. So let's take a look now. Okay, there we go. So posts and add are the actions. So I'll try writing that Python post again. Here is a Python post, it could be lowercase. I'll submit and it redirects me to the blog page. So now I can look at my database and I see I have one entry here. I have a Python post and it has the content. Here is a Python post. So now what I want to do is first, let me add a second post. Flask post. This is a post about using Flask. So I'll submit this and I should see it in my database, which I do. So now let me go back here and I will query for all the posts in the database and I will render them uh, in the index. So to do that, all I have to do is get all the posts that I have in the index. So I'll create this post, which will be a list and then post query all. So that's going to give me all the posts and then I'll pass this to the template. So posts equals posts and inside of the index template, I'll get rid of this boilerplate here. So let me take that out and I'll edit this one here. So instead of this gibberish, I'll have a variable called post and I'll have content and the title will then be post title. And of course I have to loop over all the posts that I have. So I'll need to add a loop. So for post in post, and then I can in four down here. So I'll save that and let's take a look at the index again. And I should see the two posts that I added. So I see the Python posts and I see the Flask posts. So now let's just work on the last route, which is the search one. 
So I have nothing for search yet, so I'll create another route. And it's going to be very similar to the index. And I'll call this search. And I'll use a get request for this. So I'll define this as search. And what I want to do is uh, pass a query string with the query that they're searching for. So what I'm going to do is I'll have this post list again, and I'll run a query, so post.query. But instead of all, I have to do a whoosh search, so whoosh search. And then I'm going to pass in the argument called query from the query string, which I haven't actually created yet, but I'll do that in just a moment. And I'll return render template index HTML, and then post. So inside of my index here, I have to modify this search form just a little bit. So the method is going to be get, and the action is going to be search. So I'll save that. And now if I restart everything, and if I search for, say, Python, I should only get one result instead of the two. And I do. And if I search for Flask instead, I get Flask posts. So let me add just one more post to make it more clear. Another Flask post. This is the Flask post. Submit it, and then I'll search for Flask again. And now I see the two Flask posts that I have written. So it's only searching for posts that have the keyword Flask in it, and of course, I can uh, do something more specific like flask posts or second, which I should only get one result. So it's basically the typical searching functionality that you would expect on a blog site. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to integrate this in an application. Uh, I didn't have to do much. It's basically just using the same queries that you would use uh, using SQL Alchemy, but instead of your typical filter, you would just use whoosh search, search instead. So uh, that's it for this video. If you have any questions on how I, I made this blog application, just leave a comment down below. Or any questions on anything in general, you can always leave a comment. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.